hi hi it's a new day of another week and i'm doing a little bit of reading right guys i almost cannot get this recording done because hey the devil is a liar anywho today's excerpt is from tendai huchi's book titled the hairdresser of harare this book is quite an easy read one that I didn't know what to expect because unlike me, I didn't read any reviews about it or the author. I really was just curious of the title and didn't know what to expect, but I wasn't disappointed. One thing I really liked about the book was the author's storytelling. I like how the author moved from the comedic to more sensitive themes, including homosexuality the reception, disappointment, whilst you infusing societal problems that can be typical of developing countries, and in this case, Zimbabwe, where the story is set. One thing though, I think the author was quite cliche with the persona of one of the major characters. Anyway, enjoy the excerpt. Luke was slightly taller than Dumi and had piercing eyes. He had the same athletic build that seemed to run in the family's male DNA. I later learned he had played tennis for Zimbabwe at junior level. We sat in the lounge in front of a massive widescreen TV. It was tuned to MTV and we watched the videos of rappers and gyrating girls coming on screen at three minutes intervals. Michelle offered a running commentary on who had won what rap battle, who was hot and who was not, and who had a beef with whom. If there was anything American, then she had a running commentary to go with it. Chimonisu stuck to her side, fascinated by this new auntie who had a strange accent. Sandra came in and apologized for her lateness. She was a colored girl with green eyes and long frizzy hair. She offered me a limp hand and regarded me with barely concealed contempt as if asking, what is this township girl doing here? Her pearly feet flashed at me in the brief imitation of a smile. She moved over to Luke and curled round him like a python on its prey. Mr. and Mrs. Unkube came in soon afterwards and were headed into the dining room, which was very spacious with a mahogany table that could sit 12. The maids brought in mountains of food more than we could hope to finish. There was rice, roast duck, beef, vegetables, mushroom soup and four other side dishes which I could not identify. I hope you like the food, Mrs. Inkube said to me, sounding a little nervous after she had said grace. It looks lovely, I replied. Only the best for the girl who killed my son. Come on, let's get stuck in, Mr. Inkube said rather abruptly. Dumi, sitting beside his father, maintained a somewhat stony expression, avoiding looking at anyone else. He kept his eyes on his plate. There was the slightest of tremors in his hand as he picked up his fork.